Hello and welcome to Editing Wikipedia. My name is Ariel Citrone and I'm the Institutional Partnerships Manager for Wikimedia DC, which is the regional outreach organization for Wikipedia and other projects of the Wikimedia Foundation. We promote participation in Wikimedia projects in DC, Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Delaware, and throughout the United States, though we also do programs internationally. So starting with the basics, what exactly is Wikipedia? Wikipedia is a multilingual web-based free encyclopedia based on the model of openly editable content. That's a fancy way of saying it's an online encyclopedia that anyone can edit. It's the largest and most popular general reference work on the internet, and it operates uh, with donations that are provided um, by its donors to the Wikimedia Foundation. So you'll hear me say Wikimedia and Wikipedia quite a bit. This is how I like to define it. So consider Wikimedia the umbrella and underneath Wikimedia, we have the various projects. Uh, Wikipedia being of course the largest. Wikipedia was founded with the idea that there should not be a paywall between individuals and the sum of all human knowledge. And by crowdsourcing that work, we can help to move it forward. It is free to use Wikipedia and both free to edit Wikipedia. It is created and edited by volunteers. It is overseen by the Wikimedia Foundation, though they don't have any say in the content that is done by volunteers. They do provide funding um, via donors uh, to Wikipedia and other Wikimedia projects. If you've ever gone into Wikipedia and asked you for money, that money goes to the foundation and they use it to host Wikipedia and other projects, as well as provide grant funding to many organizations and initiatives like Wikimedia DC. All edits in Wikipedia are recorded uh, and remembered forever. There are currently over 7 million articles in English language Wikipedia, and there are Wikipedias in 280 languages. All content in Wikipedia is freely licensed without restrictions. That means that once you add content into a Wikipedia article, you're releasing the rights to those words. Uh, please keep that in mind as you are editing. Uh, all images, that applies as well. There are ways to upload images uh, that you have taken and release the rights or address the rights when doing so. We will talk about that later. But just know when adding content to Wikipedia that commercial reuse of that work is possible. So please be okay with releasing the rights um, as you add new text to a Wikipedia article, as well as if you decide to add images that you own to Wikimedia Commons, which is the online photo repository for Wikimedia projects. So basics, policies, and oversight for Wikipedia. So what is a wiki? A wiki is a website anyone can edit at any time. The edits are meant to be quick. All versions are remembered forever. forever. Uh, wikis hyperlink from one to the other. So if you've ever been into a Wikipedia article and you click on one blue link and it takes you to another one and then you ultimately uh, are 10 pages deep and don't know how you got there, that's our uh, what our hyperlinks are used for. It's used to create a web of uh, Wikipedia articles. Our five pillars uh, for Wikipedia. So these are really the core beliefs of Wikipedia. Uh, so this slide as well as the next one are pretty important things to remember when adding new content. So again, please note that Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. It should be written as such. Uh, it should be written from a neutral point of view. All content is free for anyone to use, edit, or distribute. An editor should treat each other with respect and civility, and Wikipedia has no firm rules. So I do want to back up a step to address the, address the civility issue. Uh, Wikipedia can be a social media environment. It is not a social media platform, so there is a way for people to communicate uh, with each other, uh, so editor to editor, um, for example. If you ever feel threatened on Wikipedia, uh, that behavior is taken seriously and you can report that behavior. Uh, Wikipedia will uh, ban editors or take appropriate action, so please do not hesitate to uh, report behavior that makes you feel unsafe. You'll see here at the bottom of the slide, I have a little shortcut called WP colon pillars. You'll notice these throughout the presentation. If you go to Wikipedia itself and type this into the search bar, it will take you to the page that goes into each one of these things in depth. And as I said, uh, we have shortcuts for many of the things we're going to discuss briefly today. So if you want to learn more about them, find the shortcut on the page, pause the video, and go ahead to Wikipedia, search your desired shortcut in the search bar and find the dedicated page. When editing Wikipedia, we need you to remember these following things. 
when you are writing, maintain a neutral point of view. Even if you're writing about your favorite singer or your favorite book, please write as if you are writing for an encyclopedia because that is exactly what you're doing. Keep that neutral tone throughout. Uh, next is notability. So who or what deserves to have a Wikipedia article? This is one of the most common questions that we get. So the general rule of thumb for many experienced editors is if you can find three high quality sources, secondary sources that talk about someone or something's notability or why they or it is important, uh, then that topic or subject may meet Wikipedia's notability guideline. So for example, this secondary source that talks about one's notability, we'll use a biography as an example. The secondary source should be dedicated to talking about who this person is, why they're, they are important to history or why they are contributing to society, whatever it may be. It shouldn't just be what we call a passing mention. However, it should be uh, an article or something that talks about them in depth. If you can find those initial sources that talk about that person or thing in depth, uh, you can go ahead and use um, passing mentions or um, things that help you find uh, smaller nuggets rather of information, but try to find at least two to three independent sources that talk about why someone or something is notable. Next is verifiability. Everything in Wikipedia must be cited. So even if you know something personally, personally about someone or something, please do not add it without a corresponding citation. That said, what should you be citing? You should be using reliable secondary sources, meaning all the information you add to Wikipedia should, could, should come from reliable sources. We'll get to that more in depth uh, in the next few minutes, but please keep that in mind. Next is no original research. That really means that we're not pointing to primary sources when citing our sources. We are not asking you to go and do new research on the topic. We are asking you to find information that has already been published by someone or something else. So please use information that's already out there that's already been published. Next is assume good faith. Uh, sometimes Wikipedia editors do something that's against policy or make a mistake because they're new. We always ask people to assume that whatever edits were done to your articles or whatever corrections you're making to others that you're doing in good faith to keep Wikipedia as accurate um, as possible. And next is conflicts of interest. Uh, we'll get into this in a bit more in the future, the near future, I should say. But just keep in mind that there are rules about what you can and cannot edit as it relates to conflicts of interest. So for example, you shouldn't edit uh, articles about someone you're closely related to, yourself, someone you work for, so a place that you work, work for and so forth. Quick note about reliable sources. So as we said a moment ago, you must cite your sources. So what types of things are we looking for? So these are the places where we're finding information about the subjects or topics of the articles that we are adding to or creating. So you're looking for public scholarships, news organizations, academic journals. Uh, you can cite some biased or opinionated sources like op-eds um, when trying to present one side of a topic, for example, but they should be high quality things. Uh, we should not be citing questionable sources. These are sources with poor reputation for fact-checking, uh, self-published sources. So for example, if you're writing about an individual artist and they have their own website, do not cite their website as a source of information because that is not considered a reliable source. Please also do not cite social media, including LinkedIn. So for example, if you are writing about someone and they have a LinkedIn page, and they say that they went to a certain university or worked at a certain organization. Uh, they put that there themselves. So this is not something that's been vetted by a media agency or um, another source. So you cannot so, uh, cite that on LinkedIn rather because it is uh, self-reported. Plagiarism. So this happens uh, a good deal on Wikipedia and sometimes it even happens at events called edit-a-thons that we host. Uh, Wikimedia hosts along with our partners in the area and beyond. Uh, so please take a moment to note and remember that copying and pasting exact text from a source and adding it to a Wikipedia article is not allowed. So please do not plagiarize from your sources even if you cite them correctly. Instead, we need you to rewrite the information in your own words and cite your sources properly. 
Next, again, we'll jump into conflicts of interest briefly uh, when writing or editing existing articles or new ones. Do not uh, add content about yourself, your school, colleagues, your employer, and employee, close relatives, or friends. Next is article, article quality assessment. Uh, Wikipedia articles are assessed uh, for quality. So this list is read top down. So FA stands for featured article, which means it's an article in English Wikipedia. In this case, uh, this is a chart for English Wikipedia. So it's an article in English Wikipedia that is high quality enough meaning that it has a good amount of text, that it is well sourced, that it has a number of hyperlinks. Uh, these are articles that are high quality enough to potentially be featured on Wikipedia's homepage. Uh, and then this list is read down. So we say FA for featured article, then we can move further down to B length articles and C length articles, um, start articles and stub articles. It's important to note that start and stub articles are the shortest articles in Wikipedia. So if you look at the start and stub rows and take your eye all the way over to the total column, you'll see that the majority of articles in Wikipedia are stub and, and start articles. Wikipedia's gender gap. So Wikipedia has a gender gap um, in both who edits Wikipedia and the actual content within um, English Wikipedia. So uh, the gender gap does exist in other languages, but the examples that we have here are mostly for English. So most Wikipedia editors identify as white, male, formerly educated, Christian-speaking country from the Northern Hemisphere and a white collar job. Uh, there was a survey done a few years ago in which uh, most people surveyed uh, resulted in the following um, stat we have here. So one out of every 10 Wikipedia editors identifies as female. So that's about 10%. More recent estimates, though there has not been a more recent survey officially, more recent estimates are about 12 to 15%. So that ultimately translates to a content gap. So right now in March of 2024, about 19.76% of biographies in English language Wikipedia are about women. So we're gonna jump right into it as far as how to access Wikipedia as an editor and start editing. Now I do wanna note if you plan to attend an event in the near future, which some of you may, some of these things may look a little differently at the event, but this the purpose of this portion of the presentation is to show you what you need to do to edit on your own, but also what skills you may need to bring with you to these events. So to create a Wikipedia username, go to en.wikipedia.org, select create account on the top right. Note that usernames are public and real names are not required. Once you create a Wikipedia username, I just wanna call your attention to the fact that um, you have the opportunity to create a user page. Now, this is not something you need to do immediately as a new editor, but it's something that's there for you. So once you create a username and you log into Wikipedia, you'll notice your username on the top right is a hyperlink. If you're new, that hyperlink will be read. If you click on it, you'll open up a blank page and you can share a little information about yourself. You never have to share your real name. Please do not force, feel forced to do so. If anyone asks for your real name, you do not have to share it. But please note that this is here for you. You can share information about yourself. You can say what you're interested in and many editors do. Uh, this is also a place where many editors share a list of articles they've edited or things that they're interested in. On that same page, once you click on your username, you'll notice on the left side, there's a tab called talk. Now this is where people will leave you messages. They will welcome you to Wikipedia. They'll call attention to some of the things that you have done if they want to uh, thank you for doing that or help you along to make it better. Sometimes you'll get messages here in your talk page. Now, if using your email to set up your account, you will get a notice when someone leaves you a message here. You can reply to them on your own talk page by tagging their username as well. So we're going to get ready to edit now. So there are two types of editors in Wikipedia, visual editor and source editor. 
Now, visual editor is what you see is what you get editing system. It's somewhat easy to use. It's somewhat easy to get used to. Uh, you can also edit in code. Uh, when Wikipedia first launched, you could only edit or add content in code. We are very thankful as trainers to have visual editor because it helps us teach new people how to edit and makes Wikipedia editing more accessible. So one of the things I like to uh, show new editors is how to set a preference within your Wikipedia account that makes it easier to find a visual editor. Now you can always find it, but it's not particularly intuitive. So I'm gonna show you how to set your preferences so that visual editor is easy to find. Uh, at this point in the video, you may wanna pause it and do this while I talk or note uh, the timestamp when I'm doing this, just so you know how to do it when the time comes. So open Wikipedia, of course, we're working in English language Wikipedia today. So open English Wikipedia, it could be Wikipedia itself, it could be an article, whatever it may be. Um, make sure that you are logged in. On the top right, you'll see a person icon. You're gonna click on that and click on preferences. On the next page, you'll have a page that looks something like this, perhaps a little different uh, formatting wise. You're gonna select the editing tab. You are then going to scroll down to the section called editor. Within that, open the editing mode drop down menu and select show me both editor tabs. Once you've done that, scroll to the bottom and click the blue save button. So what you were doing is telling Wikipedia that when you have an article open that you would like to edit, that you would like to see both visual editor and source editor on your screen when you need it. Article anatomy. So we have a sample article here an artist named Elizabeth Catlett. We're gonna use her as our sample today. So let's say we open this article um, and we wanted to edit it. So before we do so, we're gonna go over what this edit article looks like, some of the things you'll find in the article, and then we'll move on to what you would do if you wanted to edit that article. So we have Miss Catlett's article here. Now, just like your user page has a talk page, each article has a talk page. So if you open the article and click on the talk tab, it will bring you to a page uh, that may or may not have conversations behind the scenes that uh, other editors have had about this person, this artist. Um, you'll also see sometimes, rather most of the time, uh, tags for what are called wiki projects. So wiki projects are projects where editors work together within a certain theme. Uh, sometimes if you click on any of these blue links, it will go to those pages and it'll show you lists of people who have also been tagged as being part of that, it'll give you a list of activities that need to be created, or I'm sorry, activities that need to be um, taken on by editors, um, problems with articles that need to be addressed that all fall within whatever theme that is. So you can find those on an article's talk page and you can also find conversations behind the scenes that people have had. You do not have to ask permission on the talk page before you edit an article. When you have the article open, you can also see a view history uh, hyperlink. So on the right-hand side of the page, if you've ever wanted to see a history of every edit made to an article, open the article and click on view history. Each timestamp represents a time when that article was changed and published. So if you were to click on that timestamp, it will open the article the way it looked at that particular time. This is also in many, many cases how we revert articles back to their older states. If there's been vandalism or someone decided what they added was inaccurate, they could delete it, but they could also go back to before they added it, access this page, select it, hit edit and publish, um, and it will go back to the date that they've selected. Now here to the article itself, as far as the layout sections and so forth. So Wikipedia articles start with lead paragraphs. This is what we call our notability statement. Well, who is this person? Um, what bio data do we have about them? Um, in this case, a date of birth, date of death. Um, you'll typically see that if we have it right after their name. It'll have a statement of who she was, what she did, why is she important? This doesn't require every detail about her life, but should be a summary of the notable things about her that make her notable enough to have a Wikipedia article. So um, I recommend going to this article or another biography uh, about someone notable, looking at how that is structured. So again, it will be structured with her name in bold, uh, followed by a date of birth or date of death, if you have that information um, in your sources. 
than who she was, what she did, why is she important. With artists, that typically means describing what type of, um, of work they do, if their work's in a particularly um, notable collection, that sort of thing. Uh, it's also said often that a lead paragraph is a summary of the article below. Um, that's true for many articles, but my rule of thumb for new editors is to just try to write a few sentences that sum up a person's notability when writing biographies. So on the right side of the article, we have a main photo or info box. Sometimes you'll see this in articles, sometimes you won't. In the more high profile articles, you often do. Just know that it's okay to publish a Wikipedia article, a new one without it. It doesn't need to be there for the article to be worthy of being published, but for it to be in a good format, it's always a good idea to have one if you're able to create one. So below the lead paragraph, the rest of the article will be organized chronologically when we're, when we're talking about biographies. So we have her notability statement at the top as part of her lead paragraph. Then the sections below will be chronological. So early life and education, then career, and then what museum she's uh, exhibited and that sort of thing. So think of it as a timeline and you're working through the section, sections chronologically. Wikipedia uses inline citations. So once you add something to an article, you need to cite your source um, and the source will appear at the bottom in the references section, as well as the corresponding citation number next to the fact or information that you added. Wikipedia articles have hyperlinks. Now these links are links from Wikipedia to Wikipedia. Uh, so it is possible to link to things outside of Wikipedia, but if doing so, make sure you are doing that within the appropriate section. So within the text of the article, you are linking from Wikipedia to Wikipedia. If you want to include, let's say, an external link to an interview with Ms. Catlett or a primary source that you know that you can't cite because it's not secondary, but you still want to share it, you can go to the bottom of an article and add an external links section. If it doesn't already exist, sometimes it does. You would add that section below references, and then you would make a list of, of links that you're adding and then um, hyperlink from uh, them to an external website. But when adding hyperlinks within the actual text of an article, you are linking from a Wikipedia article to another Wikipedia article. Additional sections that you'll often see, as I mentioned already, external links, um, as you often see in Wikipedia articles below references, sometimes you will see further reading, external links, um, and articles are often tagged as being in categories. So if you want to tag someone or something as being within a certain category, you can go to the bottom and do so. Just uh, know that sometimes the names of categories can be a bit tricky. You need to figure out exactly what it's called before you add uh, someone to that category. Now, it is not required that you have a further reading or external link section. Just know that these are things that you can add if you wish to do so. The main things that you need to make sure you have are statements of notability, reliable sources that you've cited, and a references section. So now we get into how to actually edit existing articles. So Please note, if you're watching this tutorial to prepare for an upcoming edit-a-thon, please note that there will be an additional event day process for selecting articles to edit or create. Uh, that said, uh, many of the steps that will follow will be the same that you do on event day if you are planning to attend an event soon. So let's say you have an existing Wikipedia article in front of you and you found a typo or you found that there was, mis there was information missing and you... Uh, wanted to add it and you have a good source to use, what you would do is open that article in front of you, make sure that you are logged in. You will then select edit to open visual editor or edit source to open uh, source editor, but because we're using visual uh, editor today as part of the tutorial, go ahead and click on edit. You will then be presented with a bar of formatting buttons that will help you. Once you select edit, your cursor, cursor will start flashing. You can place it anywhere within the article and use Wikipedia as if it was a word processor. So add your uh, cursor, start typing, um, delete whatever typo uh, you found, add new content that was missing, um, anything um, that applies there. And you need to be sure to cite your sources. So let's say you've added information and you wanna cite the source where you found that information. You would place your cursor at the end of the sentence, um, the end of the information that you've added. Now, let's say you've had three 
sentences worth of information from one source. At the end of those three sentences, you can uh, cite um, your source. So you would go ahead and place your cursor. You'd go up to the cite button. Now, some of you may just see a quotation icon. Some of you may see a quotation icon and the word cite. It's the same thing. So you would go ahead and click cite. You'll then get a pop-up menu. Now, if you have a URL that you are citing, let's say it was a book you found online or a newspaper article you found online and you have a URL, you can click on automatic, paste it into the field and hit add. If you want a little more flexibility, you can click on manual and select what you're citing. They will then open up a uh, box that has fields that you can fill out. Uh, when, for example, citing a book, make sure that you at least add the title and uh, whatever information you can find. Uh, it's really important that that people that are seeing these sources within the Wikipedia articles um, are able to see where this information came from. Backing up a little bit, it is possible to use the automatic tab when citing a book. As long as you have the ISBN for the book, you will just need to put an ISBN and the citation will be created for you. Next is hyperlinking. So let's say you wanted to link from Wikipedia, from this Wikipedia article to another Wikipedia article. So it's just like linking in an email or something else on a website. You will go ahead and select the text uh, that you would like to link from. So in this example, we are linking from Mexico City. You would go up to the formatting bar and select link, the link icon. Once you do that, Wikipedia will pull up a list of articles uh, that also say Mexico City in the title. You'll find the one you want to link, link to, select it, and click done. Now, it's important to mention you only have to link to something the first time it appears. So let's say Mexico City appears 10 times. You only have to link to it the first time it appears in the text. Now, you'll recall a moment ago I talked about linking to a, a source outside of Wikipedia. If you wanted to link to an external site, you would go down to the external link section or add one if there wasn't one. You would type what you're linking to, you would highlight it, select the link icon, um, and instead of selecting Wikipedia, as we did in here, you would select an external site and paste your URL. Now, this is appropriate when putting a primary source like an interview or maybe a link to a, a photo of some of our artwork that's at another museum, that sort of thing. Uh, this is not the same as citing your sources. Some people do get confused by that. So adding sections. So if you'll remember that we said Wikipedia articles start with, with notability statements um, in their lead paragraphs, and then we build out, especially biographies, we build out chronologically. Now, things that are not biographies, of course, we build them out with sections as well, but we are using a biography as the example, so that's where we're going to go with right now. So let's say you wanted to build a, uh, your sections. You would place your cursor within the text where you want the section to go. You would name your section, then go up um, to the where it says paragraph at the top in the formatting bar. You would open up that drop down menu and select heading. It will change the font of your text to a header font. Okay, so again, you're going to write the name of your heading. Go up and change the font from paragraph to heading. It will enlarge the font and make it a header. You'll then select enter or return and the text will go back to a regular paragraph size. At that point, you'll start writing and add content that relates to the header that you have added. Next thing is inserting images. Now it's important to know that images within Wikipedia articles must be uploaded to Wikimedia Commons first. Now Wikimedia Commons is a Wikimedia project. It's an online photo repository that editors have gone to and added photos that they've even either taken themselves and released the rights to, or have found photos with expired copyrights or photos online or otherwise that um, were published by the government. Uh, many of those can be uploaded because they're in the public domain. Uh, and some photos online will have a statement that says, you can use these, I release the rights. So please make sure um, that you are not just going into any random website and grabbing a photo. No, however, uh, all photos that need to be added into Wikipedia articles uh, must be added to Wikimedia Commons first. So to go into Wikimedia Commons without leaving Wikipedia, uh, to see if there's uh, images that relate to your article that you're writing, you can place your cursor in the general area where you want your photo to go. So for example, if you want it on the right side, you would just click on the right side next to the text where you would like it to appear. 
Uh, you'll then go up to insert and then click images and media. You'll type the name of the person you're writing about or the thing that you're writing about and Wikipedia will pull up uh, a number of pictures. If they exist, it'll pull up a pictures or images that people have tagged as being related to the uh, topic or subject that you're writing about. If you find something you want to use, that's great. Don't be discouraged if you don't. It doesn't always is, exist, especially when we're talking about women, because we do have a gender gap, gap across Wikimedia projects. So let's say you find an article or rather a photo that you would like to put into your article. You would select it, then caption it if you choose to. Um, it's always a good idea to have one if you know what it is. If not, you can leave it blank. Uh, you will enter alternative text. This is uh, if somebody who is visually impaired, it's what their screen reader will tell them about the actual image. So you would physically briefly uh, describe what the uh, image looks like. You would then click insert and the image will go into the Wikipedia article. Now you'll see here we have two tabs, general and advanced. If you did want to change the size of the article or add a frame to it, you can do so by clicking advanced. The next and really important thing is, let's say you've done some really, really good work and you need to publish your changes, make sure that you hit publish. Now in Wikipedia, English language Wikipedia, your changes will go live almost immediately. So publish is the same as save when working on an existing Wikipedia article. Once you have clicked publish to save what you've added or changed, you will get a small pop-up uh, box that says edit summary. You will just briefly describe what you did to the article. You could say add a new biographical information or add a new citation or fix typo, whatever it may be, and you will click publish again and your changes will go live right away. So we've covered uh, editing existing articles. We are going to go over editing, um, I'm sorry, creating new articles. So this is a little text heavy, but it's important. So I did this so that you could stop and read it, uh, pause it rather, and read it when you are working on this, if you choose to do it outside of the context of an event. So let's say you wanted to add an article into Wikipedia main space. Main space is just regular Wikipedia. Now I do want to take a moment to say inexperienced editors should not edit existing articles before attempting to create new main space articles. We want you to get your practice first and so work on those first. But let's say you, you're experienced enough and you've gotten to the point where you want to work on a main space article. This is what you would do. You will go ahead and enter the article name into the Wikipedia search bar. If it doesn't exist, you will be presented with a red link. This process, again, will start differently if you're attending uh, a Wikipedia edit-a-thon, just a quick note about that. So you'll select the red link to open a blank page. You'll add a references header at the bottom. You'll return to the top of the page and start adding text and sources and hyperlinks as we already discussed using the same formatting uh, buttons and bars and all of the fun things that we've already discussed and be sure to publish when ready. Again, this is something for more experienced editors. Now let's say you wanted to start, you're not experienced and you wanted to start an article. You can do so as a draft. So draft articles are just places where you can build out an article without people coming in and deleting it right away. If it's not ready, you can save it, you can come back to it. So it's a really good way to start an article if you are relatively new. So to do that, it's similar to what we just discussed with main spaced articles. You will go to the Wikipedia search bar at the top right. You would enter draft colon and the name of the article you wanna create. You'll then, if it doesn't exist, you'll then be presented with a red link. Click on the red, red link to open the blank page. You'll then add a references header at the bottom. You'll return to the top and add text and sources and hyperlinks, etc., and publish when ready. When drafts are done, they can be moved into main space, which I'll go over how to do that in a moment. If you don't even want to do it in a draft article, you can do it in something called your sandbox. So your sandbox is a private place on your page, somewhat private, it is accessible for other people to read, but it's a place that you have um, that's connected with your username, where you, it's a blank page where you can uh, build out an article if you wanna work on it there. So it's the same process as doing it as a draft. So to access your sandbox, make sure you are logged in, click on the person icon. You'll then select the sandbox hyperlink and it will open up a blank page. You can treat that page like an article. So again, you can add a references header at the bottom, return to the top and add text and sources, et cetera, and publish when ready. So to uh, return to the sandbox when you, let's say you've started working on it and you want to abandon it and come back at a later time, 
uh, you can always save it and close it um, and go and click on the person icon to open your sandbox again and keep working. The same can be said for draft articles. You can save them and come back and keep working on them. So let's say you're done with a draft article or your sandbox article and you think it is ready to be moved to main space Wikipedia. Uh, what you need to do is what's called an article move. So let's say you have the draft article or your sandbox open on your page. Make sure you're logged in. Uh, and on the right hand side, you'll see the hyperlinked word move. Now, you will only see this if you have been editing for four days and have hit the publish button at least 10 times. This is what we call being confirmed as a Wikipedia editor. So if you are brand new and haven't met that threshold, you won't see this button yet. So keep publishing often, even if you added one sentence, publish, publish, publish. You can always hit edit and keep editing. So let's say again, the article is ready, whether it's a draft or in your sandbox and you have been confirmed by meeting that threshold. You're gonna see a move button on the right hand side. You will click on that. Uh, you will then get a page that looks something like this. You will open up the new title dropdown menu and change it to article. You'll then make sure the article name looks the way you want it to look and you will click move page. And that will take your draft um, and move it to Wikipedia main space. Now, if doing this with your sandbox, if moving your sandbox page into a Wikipedia article, make sure that you again, open new title and select article but make sure that you change the name, in this case, for the example of Sappington Village, you would change the name in that field to what the article you want, what you want the article to be called. And then you'll click move and your article will be moved into main space. The last thing we're gonna go over briefly is how to upload photos into Wikimedia Commons. So Wikimedia Commons is an online photo repository. All the images you see in Wikipedia were added to Wikimedia Commons first. So let's say you're on a walk uh, and you pass a historic building or you see a beautiful bird or flower, or whatever it may be, or uh, and you wanna upload that image to Wikipedia. Uh, I'm sorry, to Wikimedia Commons rather. You can do so even if someone doesn't use your image in Wikipedia, uh, it's very helpful to add images to Wikimedia because other people may, may find them useful in the future. So go to commons.wikimedia.org and log in. It will be the same username that you use for Wikipedia. You would then select upload. This is what's called the upload wizard. It's the easiest thing for new editors or uploaders. You'll then select media files to share, which will open up your device or laptop. You'll select the photo you wanna upload. And most importantly, it's going to ask you about copyright. So if this file is your own work, it's going to ask you to release the rights under CC 4.0 license. Now you can always see what that means by clicking on legal code, but basically what it means is you are allowing anyone to use this photo as long as they give you credit. You can also select to use a different license and you can read about the difference. You can then select next um, and you will go through the process of naming the photo. Please name it something um, that's very literal it makes it easier for people to find it. Now, if the work is the file or image is not your work, what you would do is say so. Now you're going to talk about why you can upload it even though it isn't your own work. So if you know the photo is before 1928 and the copyright has expired, you can say that. Um, if it's a work from the US government and you know that it's an automatically in the public domain, you can say that. Uh, if it is something that you found on a website and it says this photo is a CC0 and can be uploaded in any way possible, uh, you can use that. But please do not just upload any random photos that you find from the internet without, it, without knowing that the copyright has either expired or it has been published in the public domain. Um, it's very important because we don't want images in Wikimedia that um, should not be there. So you'll follow all the prompts that you see on the screen You'll name, as I said before, you will name the image, make it something literal. Don't just name it something you understand or the whatever the file number was from your device. Uh, please name it something literal because that's how Wikimedia Commons will find it when people search. Uh, you will be asked to assign metadata to it. Um, you don't have to do that. You can skip that and then you can click publish. So believe it or not, that is the end of our presentation. Uh, one of the great things about doing videos is that you can wind them back and watch them again.
So again, my name is Ariel Citrone. I am the Institutional Partnerships Manager for Wikimedia DC. Um, if you plan to uh, attend an event in the future, we'd love to see you. Uh, many of them are online, some are in person. You can always access our calendar through our website, which is wikimediadc.org. Thanks and happy editing. <laughs>